Good afternoon. This is Julie. It is Friday. Weekend is here, April 27th. We'll do a quick recap of the uh, market today, a look at a few of the items that occurred last night at the earnings, and my head scratching because I'm not sure I'm seeing the world the same way that the market participants are seeing it, and I need to make sure that I rectify myself to trade what's in front of me and not what I believe should be happening. But let's get started with the GDP report today. Um, a sharp rise in service spending kept our first quarter GDP in a very respectable range. It annualized at 2.3% for the first quarter, and that was above the consensus. So that was a, a beat. And it was a very good beat, a surprise, because we had a horrible winter globally. Uh, the winter wiped out the um, growth in, in Europe, in England, and in the United States. We had a brutal, brutal win winter this year. And so when you have blizzards happening, not a lot of people are out there spending money or working. So um, it was a very pleasant um you know, report today, we were, I was expecting a, an off report, everyone was. So when the market tanked on this great report, following the wonderful beat, the just astronomical beat, we've got Microsoft, we've got Twitter, we've got uh, Amazon and Google, our tech sector is on fire and um, the earnings are outstanding. So it all came back. It all came back to where it started from. And we're sitting here on the teeter-totter edge of coming back to look at a head and shoulders on the daily. Uh, I don't think that we're, that's going to happen, um, but you know, who's to say? Weirder things have happened. So here's the left shoulder, here's the head, sort of like a, you know, a twisted sister, double right shoulder. Um, if it comes back down, we're sitting here on the middle and you're in the middle of a range. And when you're in the middle of the range, you've heard me say this, I don't care if it's a 15 minute chart or a daily chart, it's just not a good place to launch a trade from. We wanna be up or down and trading in that direction. But we bounced on the 200 EMA. I thought for sure whoever bought this was treating themselves to a steak dinner. I hope that they didn't buy too much dessert or wine because <laughs> this may be coming back down. I'm just not sure. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is the media. First, they were telling them that there was this magical 3%, you know, crap. It's just a number. Uh, the yield curve has not flattened yet. We're in, in fact, we're nowhere near a recession. You've got to be kidding me. We're growing leaps and bounds, banks, technology, business. So forget about all that. The time to buy is on the 200 EMA. We are in an uptrend. So we want to stay with the trend and buy the trend. So it's just a dip buying opportunity if it does come back down here. Um, I do think that we will see the top end of this range next week, 69.12. So I'm going to be looking forward to that. I realize that we're in a down um, cycle right here. And you've got, of course, the media telling everyone that there's no way that they can do any better than what they've already posted, that it's all downhill from here. Well, hello, where are they getting this from? I mean, we just got the tax legislation passed. This is all new. I mean, we have several years to this cycle that hasn't even been tapped. No, I disagree. So the only thing that I can agree on is the gold. Um, here's the 200 EMA on the daily. Here's that same overhead. Um, but we're in... Um, do you see the red, white, red, white? 
we're going to be bouncing up because we've got inflation, folks, for the first time, but it's the good kind. Don't be afraid of a little bit of inflation. You know, business requires inflation. So, you know, this is what we want to see, and I want to see a bounce here on gold. I was expecting it today. Didn't quite get it. I mean, it did pop up a little bit, but it stalled out and um, didn't quite get me up there. I caught a little bit of this on the way up at one point this morning, but quickly saw that the markets just were not, you know, um, reacting. I think next week when we start getting over these downward 200s, we can just start putting gold back on our radar. Um, but today I wanted to show you the British pound and uh, look at this. This is real. Um, and this is what jawboning can do to these central bankers. Carney got himself in a little bit, bit of a box because um, his um, projections of being able to raise rates uh, came crashing down on him uh, with his inflation numbers and his GDP that was printed, again, from that horrible winter that we had. And the market was able to just decimate them overnight. So anyone trading the uh, British pound overnight got a little nice paycheck going into their weekend. And so we've got to keep ourselves aware of these opportunities and jump on them when we see them. Because my, you know, inclination is, is the markets have changed. We're no longer in these long trending conditions that the traders from the 80s and 90s were able to, to benefit from. We're in algorithmic, you know, hedging, speculating, uh, arbitraging options, and just who knows what, who's in there doing what. And all these computers now are running the show. So the, these are short-term bursts is the way I'm looking at them. And so when you can identify uh, something from the news, you know, we've got our economic calendar, we're able to see what's on the news and the horizon, how to, you know, the markets typically react to these news reports. Uh, we can be able to come in there and then just pull up a market and um, trade it. So it's more of a um, short term intercycle discipline trading approach. And this morning, everyone in the trade room uh, was excited that they were selling this. And I kept shaking them off saying, no, it's going to bounce at pivot point. They're like, no, Julie, look at your um, you know, market analyzer. It was all red. And here we were, you know, coming down into the close. I was expecting a bounce. And I said, well, it will bounce at the pivot point. And they said, oh, no. Um, let me back up. It did. Here, it was coming, it came into the pivot point, and it did bounce, but then it came right back through, crashed through it, and then it went sideways, uh, so it didn't get too much further below it, and then we just started going sideways, and then it crashed through it again, but only after it had gone sideways, and we'd all stopped trading by that point. We had all made our money uh, going into the weekend, and most traders do by 9 o'clock. Seriously, on a Friday, 9 or 9.30, we're done. And the only reason to stick around is if, you know, we've screwed something up and need to sit there in the afternoon session and try to catch up or break even. Um, but so I didn't even trade this down part here going into S1. But, you know, who would have thought, you know, after that great Amazon beat? And do you see how these markets react just precisely, these algos are in control. Bounce at the S1, where does it go, right? You know, right back up and where does it go to the 200 EMA and right back down. So, I mean, it's like, you know, what did I say earlier? You know, it's like taking candy from a baby if you know what you're looking for. But um, not don't let me, you know, just you. Uh, this is a very serious game and the markets can flip around and go sideways and do nothing and stall out immediately. These are very short term bursts, but um, the 
algorithms are in control and we just have to figure out what they're doing and if we can get the pulse of the market with one of our you know economic reports that come out something happens that is a um, not in line with the consensus or expectations and is outside the bounds you know that's when we want to be there and be able to jump on it you know identify it capitalize on it get in get out you know don't put this on your um, radar to trade all month you know for instance uh, although this is that gdp report that did turn around um you might get a little bit of mileage out of it next week i'm not sure but um I'm, I'm not going to fool with it. I'm just going to keep to my program, keep to the markets that I like to trade. And right now, I've got the 6C, gold, NASDAQ, and crude on my radar. And every time that I see that a market is breaking out, I want to jump in on it and go to my other charts. I've got my high low 1 and high low 2. And... Um, that allow me to capitalize on these moves going up or down. Here's the high low one. And this was this morning's move down. And so you can just put your, you know, template up, take them as they set up, and also enter on the um, high low two that we just saw. So you know, get used to a system, get used to trading. Uh, yes, we can all trade tick for tick, but that's really not what we should be doing. We should be centering on the red dress, you know, the lady with the red dress in the crowd. Um, what did I do here? Pick the wrong one. Um, you want to be able to pick out the spot that price is likely to be moving and then enter in that direction when all the other stars line up. So this is Julie J. Auto Trading Strategies. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, keep your eye on that um, investing calendar. Come to the website. It is right here on the page. And, you know, take a look at next week. You know, uh, be aware of what the opportunities are. Uh, you know, whether it's in the Globex session, the U.S. session, um, and familiarize yourself, you know, is it a money-making opportunity? Here's Canada GDP, you know, we'll probably have that up. Uh, do the same thing. Uh, ISM Manufacturing PMI, first day of the month. This is a fantastic indicator to trade, both in the bonds and the equities. Um, it really sets the tone for the entire month. Um, and so pick your times to be in the market, uh, trade around these reports. Um, we're going to have non-farm payrolls. We have FOMC statement, interest rate decisions. You know, we probably know where that's going. And, um, you know, trade gold when those uh, interest rates raising. And here's non-farm payrolls. We have a, a jam-packed week next week. Um, if you like my templates, come by, pick one up right here, read about the template package, and um, get in before June 1st. We're, we're going to have a price increase, so you can still uh, get in on the lower cost price. And that's about all I have for you, so we will see you next week in the trade room. And until then, have a great weekend. It's Friday. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much.